Today we're taking a second look at the movie Blood In, Blood Out. I already made one filming location video on this movie. If you haven't seen that, I suggest going to check it out. I'll put a link at the end of this video. Now in that first video, there was a few locations that I wasn't able to find. Since then, I've been able to track down a couple of them and today we're gonna take a look at those. Spoiler alert, we still will not be going to San Quentin in this video. But like I said, I was able to track down a couple more locations, so let's go see what we can find. In my first video, I show a lot of the murals that you see during the opening credits of the movie. But one mural that I wasn't able to find is this one featuring an eagle with a snake in its mouth. Thanks to one of my subscribers, we now know that that mural used to be located on the side of Brooklyn Hardware. There's now a new mural on the side of the building, but if we take a look at this old picture, you can see that's the mural that we see in the movie. After Miklo makes his way back to Los Angeles, him and Paco are on their way to the body shop when Miklo points out some Tres Puntos graffiti in the alley. This is the wall where that Tres Puntos graffiti was, and this is the alley that they were walking through. The camera is now shooting the other way, showing them walking down the alley, and Paco asks Miklo, what did you come back to LA for? And he tells him, you owe me five bucks and I'm here to collect and they were standing right here when that happens. And the way we can tell is, see this right behind Paco? Well, that would have been connected to a utility pole, which you can see right here. So right next to this utility pole is where they would have been standing. Miklo then knocks Paco's hat off, and when he goes to pick it up for just a split second, you can see some of the buildings at the end of the alley. The camera then turns and shows Paco chase after Miklo, and they go running down the alley. And right here, this is the alley that they're running down. Looks a bit different because a lot of the trees are now overgrown and we don't get that same shot of the alley, but this is the place. And this alley is located right off of Cesar Chavez, right near Saratoga Street. So there's some photos that were sent to me by one of my subscribers and if you look around you can find them on the internet and these pictures show multiple characters posing in front of a house. At first I wasn't able to figure out what these photos were from. I thought it was from a deleted scene but the more that I looked at the pictures I started to realize that these were used as reference pictures for some of the original art that was created for the movie. For instance, if you look at this picture of Paco standing in front of the house, you can see that this was used for the painting of Paco that we see at the art show. Now, right down this street is the house that those photos were taken in front of. Right here in the street in front of the house, they took pictures of Paco and Frankie and Chewy, but I still can't figure out the significance of the house. I don't know if it's just a random house that they decided to take pictures in front of. There were a lot of other scenes from the movie that were filmed in this area, so it might just be a random house. At first, I assumed it must be where they have the backyard party, but the backyard of this house doesn't match up, so it's not that. So the house is still a bit of a mystery, but this is definitely where they took those photos. Now there's some other photos that were taken as reference for paintings in the movie, and those were taken at a nearby park. In this picture, we see Juanito sitting on a bike in front of the lake at Hollenbeck Park. He would have been sitting right here on his bike. That wall that you can see behind him still looks the same. Now some of the trees have changed and some of the buildings off in the distance have changed or are no longer there, but this is definitely the right spot. And if you pay attention to that photo, you can tell that it was used to make the painting that we see of him at the art show. A few things have been changed in the painting. He's wearing a different shirt and the background is different, but it was definitely based off of this picture. Another behind the scenes photo shows Frankie, Paco, and Chewy squatting down in a park. And this of course was used to create the famous painting. Another one that we see at the art show. You know, the one where Frankie says, Hey, you made me look like a cholo, is it? Now I've seen a few people say that this is where that photo was taken. 
and this is the bathroom behind him, and these are the palm trees next to him. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I do not believe that this is where that photo was taken, because if you look closely in the picture, you can see beyond the palm trees is more grass and more trees. This area, the palm trees are right alongside the street, but in that picture, that photo is taken more in the center of the park. Also, this bathroom doesn't match up at all with the one that you see in the photo. Now, again, the park has been remodeled at least two or three times since the movie was made, and the bathrooms have been redone, but again, they're more in the center of the park. Now, I've walked all around this park trying to find that spot, and it's just not here anymore. I definitely believe that that picture was taken in Hollenbeck Park. I just think it's been remodeled so much that you can no longer match up the exact spot. Now, all of the artwork that you see in the movie that was supposedly painted by Cruz was actually painted by San Antonio artist Adan Hernandez. Hernandez lived a very interesting life, and you can find some stories and interviews with him online, and I highly suggest checking it out. Unfortunately, Adan Hernandez passed away in 2021, but luckily, we'll have his artwork to enjoy forever. Well, it's been about a year since I was up here filming for the last video, and Spider's Righteous Pad still is under construction. In the first video, I showed most of the locations from the car chase, but here's one more for you. Paco comes down Winter Street and then makes a left turn onto Townsend before making a right onto Malabar Street. Paco comes off of Malabar Street and makes a left turn going up Indiana. This building right behind me is currently a business called Ultimate Floors, but it used to be a business called Y Tire Sales. And when Miklo first gets out of prison and he needs a job, he works at Y Tire Sales. I do believe that this used to be the tire shop that Miklo works at. Not only was it called Y Tire Sales, but the interiors seem to match up with what we see in the movie. As you can see, it's a large warehouse with a pointed roof, just like the tire shop that Miklo works at. And when we see the tire shop in the movie, we can see staggered skylights on the roof and a long window at the end of the building. And now looking inside this building, we have the staggered skylights and the long window at the end. And I just confirmed with the guy in the office here that this is in fact where they filmed Blood In, Blood Out. But he said when they took over the building, they ripped out the old office and everything else. So all that stuff is gone. But this is the place. Man, I can't believe I found this. I never thought I was going to be able to find this building. And although we never actually see it in the movie, Raleigh mentions El Tipiac and the Manuel special to Paco. Now this right here is El Tipiac and it is a Los Angeles landmark. If you're ever in this area, you've got to stop by and grab yourself a Manuel Special. Check this out, Manuel Special. Is this a nuclear accident burrito or what? Now on this next location, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that it was right here in front of the old hospital across from Hollenbeck Park where Popeye calls the police station. You know the phone call I'm talking about. Oh yeah, not cool. You like busting dope dealers. And the reason why I think this is the place is when he hangs up the payphone and walks away, you can see a row of palm trees across the street, just like these palm trees here that you see lining Hollenbeck Park. There's the palm trees, and also notice this no parking sign, 
and the street lamp right across the street. Of course, here's the row of palm trees, and then it kind of blends in with the trees, but here's the street lamp, and then here's that no parking sign. It's all here. I came out here in the street so you can get a better look. Here's that no parking sign, and now you can see the palm trees a bit better. Now, I believe this is now a senior living facility, but like I said, it used to be a hospital, and so it wouldn't be that far-fetched to think that there might be a payphone in front of it, or it might have just been a prop payphone. Now, like I said, I don't know for sure that this is the right spot, but it really looks like it to me. Okay, so this is another one that I don't have 100% proof on, but once I show you, I think you might agree. So there's a scene towards the end of the movie where Paco and Raleigh are in the police station and they're arguing. And if you look out the window, you can see a McDonald's and a Chevron station. Now, right here is the old Vandy Camps building, and at the time of filming, this was just a vacant building, which means it could have definitely been rented out for film production. I believe that inside this Vandy Camps building, this was used for the interiors of the police station because if we come right over here and take a look, right across the street, you've got McDonald's and Chevron. Uh, you can see that this McDonald's, it's been remodeled, so the signs could have been changed, but You've got McDonald's, Chevron, it matches up perfect. If you look right up here, I believe these are the windows. This one right on the corner and then the three next to it, I think those are the windows that you see the camera looking out in the movie. Cheap Time Social Club, Wilmington, California. This proved to be one of the hardest locations to track down out of all of the locations for this movie. Now, in my first Blood In, Blood Out filming location video, I said that if anybody knew where the missing locations were to reach out to me, and quite a few of you reached out to say that you knew where Cheap Times was filmed, and that it was filmed at an adult club called Shipwreck Joey's, which used to be located right here where I'm currently standing. Now, I've talked about Shipwreck Joey's before because it was also used in To Live and Die in LA. And since so many of you reached out to tell me that Shipwreck Joey's was used for cheap times, I just figured, okay, well, we know where that is now, I can move on. But once I started comparing Shipwreck Joey's to cheap times, I started noticing that they actually look nothing alike. Now, if you compare the two buildings, yeah, they're both circular type buildings, but beyond that, they really don't look anything alike. So I was now back to square one, so, I went back to the internet, I started searching, I really didn't know where to start, so we were just doing lots of searching, and I'm not, I don't even remember how, but we somehow came across this photo of a business called Papa's Nudes. And once I saw this photo, I knew right away that that was Cheap Times. Now the only problem was, I knew for sure that that was the building that was used for Cheap Times, but beyond that, I didn't really have any information. The only info that came with the photo is that it was taken in 1971 and that it was in San Pedro, California. So after spending hours searching the internet, I decided to reach out to some friends that I knew grew up in the San Pedro, Wilmington area. And the first friend that I sent the photo to, as soon as they saw it, they said, oh, that's Shipwreck Joey. But I knew that wasn't right. I then sent the photo to another friend that grew up in San Pedro. She showed it to her mom and her mom said, I know exactly where that building was. I grew up right next to it. It used to be a place called Sassy Lassie. So now we were on the hunt for a place called Sassy Lassie, and that was a whole nother thing. I won't even take you through all that. I mean, we reached out to a burlesque museum, just a whole nother thing. But one way or another, eventually we found an address for the Sassy Lassie, and it was this building right here. But as we researched this building, we found out that it's been here since the 40s. So once again, this was not the building we were looking for. We were now right back at the beginning. So once the Sassy Lassie didn't pan out, we then reached out to San Pedro City Hall, who referred us to the San Pedro Historical Society, and they were really cool and did some research for us. They weren't able to find the building, but they somehow determined that it wasn't in San Pedro, but it was actually in Wilmington. Now at this point, we had almost completely given up. We had actually given up about 10 or 15 times, but we decided to try one last thing, and my wife suggested that I go to the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. So I went down to the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce, I told them what I was looking for, I showed the lady the photo, and the first thing she said to me is, oh, I know that building, it's not there anymore, it used to be a place called Shipwreck Joey's. I politely disagreed with her, I told her this was not Shipwreck Joey's, I showed her the differences in the building. Now, 
she got intrigued and she really wanted to figure out what this location was. She got on the computer, she made some phone calls, and we sat there for maybe about 20 minutes trying to figure it out. All of a sudden, a light bulb went off in her head and she remembered a building that she had done research on a long time ago. She jumped back on the computer, she started searching for it. She found this photo of a place called Expo Adult Theater, and there it was. Now, once again, all we had to do was find the address. But with it being the Expo Adult Theater, I started searching and I finally found the address. So finally, after all of that research, we found that the building that was used for Cheap Times used to be located at 3131 Anaheim in Wilmington. And that would have been somewhere right here. I can't tell you exactly where it was because things have changed a lot here. There's no longer any buildings. This is a newer bridge. Everything that was here has been torn down, but somewhere right in this area is where Cheap Times was. And if you look at these electrical towers right here, you can actually see these behind cheap times. And I don't know for sure, but I think this utility pole right here might be the one that you can also see in that shot of cheap times. So if that's the case, possibly cheap times was located right here. I can't say for sure, but we do know definitely that somewhere right in this area is where cheap times was. And I already showed you in my last video that the ending of the movie takes place on the LA River just beside the 6th Street Bridge. Right down there at the bottom of that power station is where the mural was. But let's see if we can get a little bit of a closer look. So I actually shot this footage over three different trips. And during the first trip, the wall looked like this. But then when I returned just one week later, somebody had added this to the wall. How rad is that? But then when I came back two weeks later, it had already been removed and the wall looked like this again. And don't forget that the original movie was over four hours long, so there's tons of footage that we've never seen. You can even see some of that footage in the trailer. Plus, there's still a couple of unexplained photos floating around online. Now, hopefully one day they'll release a director's cut with the original four hour plus movie, and then we'll be able to hunt down some of those locations as well. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.